this create content, get traffic, get relevant traffic from Google and other search engines, mm -hmm. and then turn a percent of that traffic into leads for the law firm? Yes, with one additional step in the middle. So um, create content, attract traffic uh, through highly targeted searches. Um, okay. And then when the potential client comes in, even if they think that they're a potential, you want them to be able to interact with the information and qualify themselves. Wow. And you want the ones that aren't going to be qualified to weed themselves out based on the content that you've provided so that only the actual viable ones contact your firm uh, either through calling them, uh, calling the firm or filling out a form, or some of our attorneys end up putting live chat on their site as well. Uh, and then, and then hopefully becoming a paying client, but the, the rubber really meets the road on that qualification part, especially mm -hmm. when you're doing this at scale. So the, the firm that I mentioned, that's get, they got 35,000 uh, visitors yesterday. Um, if there wasn't a screening mechanism, There'd be so many leads from that to have to um, to have to sort through that it becomes a, a whole nother department to the firm just to uh, sort through, field, and qualify those leads. A firm that's getting that many visitors still has that problem, mm -hmm. but uh, when you're, let's say, you're a small family practice and you start having two or three hundred visitors a day, even at that point, you need a screening mechanism so you're not having every tire kicker calling your firm. Now, um, are these screening mechanisms, are they tools that you create or do you, do you do it with the content itself? Like for myself, mm -hmm. I do pay-per-click for service companies, lead generation. Mm -hmm. So I try to make it very clear on my website with my content, e-commerce, selling products, I'm the wrong person. Mm -hmm. um, do you have that strategy with content where you try to attract the right kind of cases or people and kind of disattract or make your, yourself not attracted to the people with cases you wouldn't want? Yeah, the content serves as a filtering mechanism. So the content oh, okay. is what's going to attract people through the search engines because that's what the search engines value in response to the questions that, it, that the users ask of the search engines. And then when they get there, not everybody's going to read everything. Somebody might just fill out a form. But the way our websites are designed, especially on the more substantive content pages, is somebody comes in because they um, queried something very specific, like pulled over, added DUI, roadblock, city name, um, police uh, department name, whatever. So they come in, they find this very specific information. Well, it doesn't look just like an advertisement. So they're going to read more of it if it's actually applicable to them. And if it's not actually applicable to them, they're probably not going to stay anyways. And so the more they read, the more likely they are if after they've read it, they still contact the firm to be a, a client that's in alignment. Um, so it's a different approach than a lot of the design agencies take where you've got these big flashing contact us, yeah. uh, yep. do it now, um, that type of thing. Those do work, but they tend to, um, they tend to push away those that are more educated and affluent and are looking for um, real solutions to their problem. And right. they tend to attract those that are dialing for dollars. Um, so, so um, you know, as an attorney who's been there and had to field my fair share of um, calls, and the, the, the worst one that I ever got was a lady called and she said, my chickens are fighting with my cows and my husband is not sympathetic. And, you know, what do you do with that? But those people are out there and they want people to talk to and they call attorneys. So, yeah, you know, the content. Uh, I, I really like that strategy because even if you're not losing money, like no one's taking money out of your pocket. If someone comes to your website who has a horrible, crazy case like that and then calls you, money's not being taken out of your pocket, but you're losing time in terms of opportunity costs. You're paying for employees to answer the phone. And then the thing I get scared of uh, as a, person with a website that the public interacts with, if you attract those kind of people and you get on the phone with them, well, a person like that is, I would say, a crazy person. And then if you if you say, uh, ma'am, we don't do those kind of cases, I can point you to the state bar, uh, we recommend you contact them, they might blow up on you. And then they might leave you a one-star review online. And then you have that negativity and you didn't do anything wrong yourself. So I love that strategy of trying to block the not block but just 
dissuade the bad traffic from contacting you. Yeah, yeah, and it's 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 not um, it's not a foolproof system by any means. Yeah. There are going to be those that that uh, make it through, but it certainly cuts down on it. And and you know you're giving your potential clients a job before uh, they've uh, contacted you. Mm -hmm. And the more you can get people to do things for you, the more they're going to want to do things for you more. And so um, Lawlytics is designed for that, so you can create. Um, custom contact forms as well. So if you want them to give you certain information, you make them work for it a little bit more mm -hmm. rather than just pressing that like big flashing red call here button or whatever. Yeah, this is this is a unique strategy because a lot of the uh, softwares and pages and all that kind of stuff out there, there's a lot of stuff that it's like they give you a countdown clock to try to pressure you to fill out the form and mm -hmm. there's not a lot of lead qualification. 